Hello guys and welcome back. And welcome back to three steps backwards so you can go forwards two steps. There is way too much wasted space in this engine bay with the layout that I've got and not enough batteries in here. Uh, I can get six batteries in here which is nowhere near enough. I've got 29 batteries to hide in this car. And I don't want to have four different battery boxes or more or whatever. I want to have as many batteries in under the front of the car as I possibly can under the bonnet. So as you can see I've shifted this over. The charger could be turned around and moved over that way. These top bars can be cut off. And make space for just a square battery box which should be able to hold another four batteries in this area uh, which would put ten batteries all together in the under the um, the bonnet under the, the hood in the engine barrier area which would be a big bonus there's so many blooming batteries in this uh, that came with this e-golf or the, the batteries are so large that came with the e-golf. I wondered at the time how Volkswagen managed to use these cells without any cooling or heating and without any over overheating uh, issues with the actual cells themselves and I've come to the conclusion that these cells are so over specified for current that they just don't get hot that's my thinking and the reason they'll get hot is because they're big big heavy things so there's nothing small about them so if I could get 10 cells in the front then Maybe, just maybe, I can squeeze all the rest in behind the seats, the back seats. So that's what I'm looking towards doing now anyway. It's kind of disappointing that I've got this far and suddenly had to change. In reality, I couldn't know what I didn't know. I couldn't know what that I was going to use this unit here because I didn't have one. I'll probably cut the rails here. Uh, I might have to build it up slightly in the bottom so that I've got something to set a box onto. And then the, a large box that'll hold multiple batteries. A single box is the name of the game. And then the lid, put the lid on it and then put the high voltage junction box on top of the, uh, the battery box. That's kind of the way I'm thinking now. There's too much wasted space here, I need to sort this out. Okay guys, so now that I've butchered my my frame and probably weakened it a fair bit, especially along here, I'm going to try and reintroduce a bit of strength into it. So that will go in there like that. And I have another piece to go in along the top somewhere. Here. I'm buried with the steel. So that'll go in there. Weld those two bits in. Weld up that hole that I had previously drilled to put a bit of strength back in there. The idea is to put the charger. I'm hoping to get away with not having to have some sort of a strengthener here, but I might need to. Um, because I was hoping to be able to slide the charger in from the side. But I might have to put it in there if there's some sort of a strengthening bar coming in. But we'll, we'll figure it out. Unfortunately, I'll not be able to put the batteries in directly on top of this because part of the mount for the gearbox sort of sticks up here a little bit. So I'll have to put another frame on top, possibly extend it out this way, something like that. I haven't quite decided yet. But the idea then is that a battery box can then sit on top of this. Now the motor connection or the connection from the motor goes up past that and into the inverter which is going to be on top. So the inverter will be sitting up here 
and then the motor cable comes up straight up into the bottom of the, the connection here um, so now that I've moved the whole thing across I'm going to need to make new brackets for this but as you can see I've made a bracket for this I just took a piece of flat steel and started bending it and this is what I ended up with and did a bit of bending and welding and hammering and thumping and and that's the, the outcome Alright guys, well, I spent a few hours this afternoon getting this uh, frame sorted out for the inverter. Hopefully we still have enough room for everything else I plan to do in that corner, but I guess we'll find out in due course. Anyway, the purpose of all of that was to create space for a battery box. And this is a mock-up of said battery box. The plan is to put the batteries on their sides and squeeze them in to as tight a box as I possibly can. I don't have that much space um, this direction or this direction so this box I think is okay. I think it fits alright with the, um, the front battery box in. So I think that's about the maximum length. I could make it slightly narrower so four large modules not six like i hoped but it is what it is it's better than nothing this is the high voltage box sitting on top now you know <laughs> you know it's a little bit tight when you're having to cut the insulation out from under the bonnet <laughs> to uh to make it fit it did actually sit on it with the insulation just pushing up against it and in the other car I might even just leave the insulation in. It just depends. This might be slightly taller than it needs to be. I'm not 100% sure. It's close but not perfect. But uh, yeah, for the purpose of this I cut out the insulation. Now, the way I see it, there's two ways we could make this. We can either cut it out into all the different rectangles and weld them all together or we can try and fold it like you would a, a sheet of paper. Only trouble is this is a little bit heavier than a sheet of paper it's about 1.5 mil so <laughs> yeah we'll see it may not work but we'll give it a try. Okay, guys, so what I've done to try and give myself some sort of chance of bending it, I've just run the angle grinder along the lines as best I could. It's not, not perfectly straight, but they're not too bad. Just cut in, I don't know, half a mil, maybe one mil, quarter mil, something like that. Just enough to weaken it at that point to hopefully help it to bend. Okay, I probably will have to put it on a weld. I 
bit of weld across that just to give it strength. But there you go, guys. One box. A whole lot better than I could have hoped for, to be honest. One point five or one point six millimeter sheet steel bent. <laughs> so let's see if it fits. The whole idea is that it goes in here like so. so I'm going around about there somewhere. I need to make enough room, leave enough room for those two. Pipes are the you see there. Those are the heater matrix pipes. So I need to be careful of those. Um, leave sufficient room for for those pipes. I also need to make sure that at the front, that at the front, there's sufficient room between here and the front of the car for the front battery box. But if my measurements are correct, then that should be okay. I'm very pleased with that. I'll go ahead and finish welding these edges and uh, then I'll start thinking about mounting the batteries. Okay guys, well as you can see we've I've, uh, got the battery modules into this new box. I'm planning to secure the modules in the box by first of all putting, I don't know if you can see it or not down there, but that's better. I've got a piece of thread, a bar going between the bottoms at this end and this end are held together with <coughs> threaded bar same again here there's a um, threaded bar at the bottom of that and there just to hold those two together and those two together and then going in the top threaded bar going right the way through obviously have another nut here on this side and another nut on this side but I've got threaded bar going the whole way through and with nuts in various places which I'll probably hold on with um, thread lock just to secure the batteries in place so they're not they can't rattle about or move if uh, under acceleration and braking so that's that done uh, I also made a lid for it which It's a wee bit tight. <laughs> it is tight but it fits, which is kind of what you want. There you go. <laughs> okay guys, well as you can see we have the the battery box is now fitted. I have drilled and tapped holes into the frame here and so that's now nice and secure with M8 bolts um, I don't know if you notice or not here but there was a bracket that welded into position here but uh, I found that I wasn't able to get the charger in the end which it had to, it had to be slid in the end because it was so tight I couldn't get it in the end because of these new bits of um, box section that have been welded in here to support this battery box so I had to cut that out and I've made another bracket so I've just brought this over so you can see I made another bracket here which is bolting in as it was before but in this test time it'll the bolts will go I'll use bolts to hold it to the frame and as you probably see I've put a step into the bracket so that it uh, fits both the frame and the, the uh, bolt holes that were there. So the idea is that I can just take this and slide it in there like so. can just bolt straight down through into the frame. So that's 
that's how that's going in as, as you can see we have the battery modules uh, they can go in they are uh, got bars to hold them in position so they'll all be secure so I'm, I'm pretty happy that this will all be uh, completely secure from movement certainly during normal dr uh, driving and uh, I want it to be reasonably strong so that if there is an accident it's not going to fold up on me so at the moment I am trying to basically just mock up uh, exactly where everything is going to be under the bonnet and this is where we are currently at this is a cover for the front battery box this is the second battery box and this is the high voltage junction box and the cables will be coming directly from through the through a holes in the lid directly up into this high vo voltage junction box there's no need for pipe you know for any any other way to do it so this will actually be screwed to the lid when we get this finished I think that'll probably have to be this lid will be bolted down first or screwed down or whatever I haven't figured that out yet but the lid will be go will be secured first and then the high voltage junction box probably bolted to the lid this lid is in position and as you can see there's a nice gap around it so it should be okay none of this stuff should be moving this is all secured to the frame legs of the car you can see they're they're, they're bolted in down there um, the bit that moves the motor is there and hopefully <laughs> I think I've got enough clearance I guess I'll know better after I've driven it for a while but I don't think that will be moving about too much it, it is on rubber mountings and so on but it should, hopefully it it's well it's tied in at the bottom it's tied in at the top and so to stop it from twisting and that's done using the original uh, TD4 engine supports so that should be plenty to hold this so yeah it's starting to fill up there's a battery will have to go in here so I'll have to fabricate some sort of a battery mount for for that and then figure out what I'm going to do with the the original ECU connections and cables they had gone into a box which no longer exists so I have to figure that out the alternator goes down in here is quite short so that shouldn't be a problem and then the power steering fuel pump sits up here so and then the, the belt goes down between them so all of that should be should be plenty of room there for that I haven't even considered water pumps yet there's going to have to be a water pump to pump the fluid through from the radiator at the front through the inverter the charger and the motor and probably we'll just use the same fluid to go through the IRD or the intermediate reduction drive which is the, the bit that gives four wheel drive in these cars it's uh, liquid cooled as well We'll just use the same coolant for everything. I think this will be the final resting place for everything. I'm not 100% sure, but hopefully it'll, it will be. So that's the general layout for now. <laughs> Obviously everything is subject to change, but for now I think it should work. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.